Well, we go from an end to a beginning. Just like that, everyone. Last week, we wrapped up ordinary time with Christ the King, and now we're into the season of Advent. And if you remember how it ended last week, everyone, we have two men, Jesus and Pilate, eye to eye. Pilate asks, are you a king? Jesus never comes out and says yes. And we said, why? Because Pilate's idea of kingship was this. It's about power, and it was about violence. That's how he attained power, everyone. Through power, and he attained it through that power of violence. And for Jesus to say, yes, I am a king, that's the only way Pilate thought. This man is trying to take away my power. How will he do it? By putting together violence. By putting together force. So Jesus never says, I am a king, even though we know he is a king. Because his kingdom isn't about power and violence. It is about the kingdom, everyone, of the salvation of souls. That's why Jesus came. And everyone with that, now we find ourselves in the new. A new season, Advent, new church year. The year of grace 2016 begins today. And it's a new cycle of reading. So Deanna and also Sean, as you go through now these readings, you will hear from the Gospel of Luke. We are now in cycle C. Of course, everyone, the word Advent means coming. We wait the coming of Jesus Christ. Of course, we wait His coming, everyone, at the end of time. When we hear the Gospel of today, stand erect, be ready when Jesus comes. And be ready, await that day. Anticipate it. Live your life prepared for it. But for the next four weeks, what I want to look at is the first coming of Jesus Christ. Okay? And with that in mind, everyone, I want to give you two speculative questions to help us take off on this theme. Question one, what if you were God and wish to completely receive or reveal yourself to a planet? Number two, knowing the awesome disparity between yourself and the people of the planet, what would be your first act? Okay, we're going to look at this now over four weeks. Okay, I'm thankful to Gail Edwin and his book, The Jesus Side, will take a lot of his thoughts today, and I'll share them with you the weeks ahead. Gail Edwin starts out, everyone, about the experience of what it was like for the birth of his four children. He writes this, and I quote, My four children were all born under very sanitary conditions, so sanitary that I was unwelcome, somewhat devastating as a father, to have the nurses quickly remove newborn baby from the mother's room because I, the father, was coming. Okay. So when we think about the birthplace of Jesus, this is our takeoff. We think about a superstructure, a super hospital, extremely sanitary, everyone, where the only person allowed to be born is God. Nobody else. After all, who else is worthy to be born in this super hospital? All right, with that in mind, then let's look at how Jesus came. You know something, everyone? When you put up your nativity scenes, I want you to remember this. They're beautiful, but they certainly don't do justice to the whole story. Here's an example. Think about this, everyone. Think about in that stable. We think about animals, and one of the things that we had to realize was present, everyone, was animal droppings. Okay? So when you think about that nativity scene, everyone, you think about that stable. You had to realize when it came to Joseph and Mary, shepherds, people who came, did they have to look for animal droppings? Indeed, they did. How many of your nativity scenes have animal droppings? Not only the animal droppings, but there's the aroma. How many of you have that aroma? My brother's got some hogs. I can bring some aroma if you want it. Okay? Amazing stuff, isn't it? All right? The aroma. And then think about Joseph. Think about the poor guy. Here's his wife, ready to give birth. He looks for a place for her, and all that he can find is what? Guys, imagine this. 
The only place you could find for your wife to give birth is a stable. A stable. Sanitary? Huh. How many of your nativity scenes have some saliva on the manger? That's what it, was. it was a feeding trough for animals. You never watch an animal eat when they're hungry. I tell you, the old saliva boy, it builds up. So it would have to coat everyone, that manger. And there Jesus is born. Guys, what would that feel like? All right? Probably never thought of that. Okay? So obviously, everyone, the location doesn't really inspire us. Let's look, everyone, at the city. If we're going to build this super hospital, sanitary, everyone, and the superstructure only Jesus could be born, where would we put it? We'd put it in a big city, wouldn't we? We'd think about New York, Rome, Paris, Beijing, Moscow, someplace else. But get this, Bethlehem. When you go home today, if you want to try something, do this. Famous hospitals and mo- or famous hotels and motels in Bethlehem. See what you get. You know what you're going to get? Nothing. How many of you have ever heard of a convention center based in Bethlehem? For big events. That's right, you have it. Bethlehem. Not Jerusalem, not New York, not Beijing, not Moscow. Bethlehem. Okay? Not very intimidating. What about the parents? People, we take the virgin birth for granted. But imagine what that was like back in the day of Mary and Joseph. Here, I'll give you a little scenario of how it could have played out, okay? In more modern terms. Let's just pretend Mary was part of a youth group, okay? And in this youth group, there were other people, youth, and we had the youth leader. And all of a sudden, the youth group watches Mary, and all of a sudden, they notice everyone. My golly, this holy woman, remember, she never sinned, everyone, is pregnant. They're, de- you know, they're devastated. They're just, they just don't know what to say. So all of a sudden, one day, the youth leader goes up to Mary and says, Mary, how did you get pregnant? And she says, the Holy Spirit. You would have laughed right out of the building. Wouldn't you? The Holy Spirit. Never heard of it before. Okay? Now you can't tell me Jesus, when he was a child, wasn't made fun of by fellow kids. You don't have a daddy. Scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, what a great way. Take a shot. You don't have a daddy. Imagine, everyone, the embarrassment, the rumors, the whispering. And they happened. Parents weren't intimidating. City wasn't intimidating. And neither was the birthplace. Is there any hope? We'll have to pick that up next week. Okay? In the meantime, everyone, I want to go back a little bit to last week when I preached on ISIS. And I mentioned this when it comes to ISIS. We certainly oppose their violence, but we have to remember they are brothers and sisters in God. We are to pray for them and we are to love them. And once you know it, everyone, this week there's another shooting in of all places, an abortion clinic. An abortion clinic. Now as Catholics, everyone, we stand for life. Okay? We oppose abortion. But no one in this church, I hope, can stand up and say, yes, what that man did was the right thing. We do not return violence with violence. That's what Jesus taught. And sometimes we wonder as a world and as a society, man, it just seems to be getting so out of hand. Is there anything that we can do about it? There is. Throughout the state of Minnesota, Catholics are asked this coming Friday to take a day of prayer and fasting for an end of violence in the world. 
and I would encourage all of us to do it. On Friday, this Friday, December 4th, pray and fast for an end of violence in the world. Okay, and remember what fasting means, everyone. Nothing between meals. Two smallest meals are not to be equivalent to your largest meal. People, how is violence going to end in the world? There's only one way, and it is through the power of Jesus Christ. We can't do it. Just as soon as we started making decisions, everyone, as I told you before, what came? Sin came, and with sin came violence. The only one that can is Jesus. Turn to him. Trust him. Friday, everyone, I recommend it. I can't require it of you, but I recommend all of us pray and fast that day for an end of violence in the world. You know, in closing today, everyone, it's amazing when we listen these next four weeks, really the story of Jesus. It isn't the way we expect. We would have never mapped it out that way. But it is an amazing story, isn't it? The kingdom of God is here and we await its coming in glory. So God's blessings to you, everyone. And like I told those little kids, it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, ready yourselves for the coming of Jesus Christ.